can we take a step in that direction of autonomous vehicles? Mm-hmm. Make sure talking to the CTO of Waymo tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And obviously, I'm talking to Elon again in a couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. What's your thoughts on autonomous vehicles? Like, where do we stand? Mm-hmm. What, well, like, as a as a problem that has the potential of revolutionizing the yeah. world. Well, you know, I'm really excited about that, but it's become much clearer that the original way that I thought about it, most people thought about it, like, you know, will we have a self-driving car or not is way too simple. The, the better way to think about it is that there's a whole continuum of how much driving and assisting the car can do. I, I noticed that you're right next here to your next door to Toyota that's Research a to- Institute. That's a total accident. I love the TRI folks, but yeah. Have you talked to Gil Pratt? Uh, yeah, we're going to, we're supposed to uh, talk. It's it's kind of hilarious. So there's kind of the, op- I think it's a good counterpart to say what Elon is doing. Um, and hopefully they can be frank in how what they think about each other, because I've heard both of them talk about it. Um, but they're much more, you know, this is an assistive, a guardian angel that watches over you as opposed to try to do everything. I think there's some things like driving on a highway, you know, from LA to Phoenix, where it's mostly good weather, straight roads. That's close to a solved problem, let's face it. In other situations, you know, driving through the snow in, in Boston where the roads are kind of crazy. And most importantly, you have to make a lot of judgments about what the other driver is going to do at these intersections that aren't really right angles and aren't very well described. It's more like game theory. Yeah. Um, that's a much harder problem and requires understanding human motivations. And um, So there's a continuum there of some places where the cars will uh, work very well and others where it could probably take decades. What do you think about the Waymo? So you mentioned two companies that are actually have cars on the road. Mm-hmm. There's the Waymo approach that it's more like, we're not going to release anything until it's perfect and we're gonna be very strict yeah. about the, the streets that we travel on, but mm-hmm. it better be perfect. Yeah. Well, I'm smart enough to be humble <laughs> and not try to get between. I, I know there's very bright people on both sides of the argument. Yeah. I've talked to them and they make convincing arguments to me about how careful they need to be and the social acceptance. Um, some people thought that when uh, the first few people died from self-driving cars, that would shut down the industry. But it, it was more of a blip, actually. And, you know, so that was interesting. Um, of course, there's still a concern that if, if, uh, if there could be setbacks if we, we do this wrong, you know, your listeners may be familiar with the different levels of self-driving, you know, level one, two, three, four, five. I think uh, Andrew Ang has convinced me that this idea of really focusing on level four, where you only go in areas that are well mapped rather than just going out in the wild, is the way things are going to evolve. But you can just keep expanding those areas where you've mapped things really well, where you really understand them, and eventually they all become kind of interconnected. And that could be a, a a, a kind of another way of progressing um, to make it more uh, feasible over time. I mean, that's kind of like the Waymo approach, which is they uh, they just now released, I think just like a day or two ago, a public, like anyone from the public in the um, in the Phoenix, Arizona, uh, mm-hmm. the, the, to, uh, you know, you can get a ride in a Waymo car with no person, no driver. Oh, the, they've taken away the safety driver? Oh, yeah. there's the, the, For a while now, there's been no safety driver. Uh, okay. Because, I mean, I, I've been following that one in particular, but I thought it was kind of funny. About a year ago, when they had the safety driver, and then they added a second safety driver because the first safety driver would fall asleep. <laughs> it's like, I'm not sure they're going in the right direction with that. No, they, <laughs> <laughs> they've... Um, way more in particular done a really good job of that they they actually have a very interesting infrastructure of remote like observation so they're not they're not controlling the vehicles remotely but they're able to it's like a customer service they yeah. can anytime tune into the car i i bet they can probably remotely control it as well but that's officially not the function that, <laughs> that they yeah i can see now. that being a really because I think the thing that's proven harder than maybe some of the early people expected was there's a long tail of weird exceptions. Yeah. So you can deal with 90, 99, 99.99% of the cases, but then there's something that just never been seen before in the training data. And humans, you know, more or less can work around that, although let me be clear and note, there are about 30,000 human fatalities just in the United States and, and maybe a million worldwide. So they're far from perfect. But um, I think people have higher expectations of machines. They don't wouldn't tolerate that level of death and uh, damage from a machine. 
And so we have to do a lot better at dealing with those edge cases. And also the the tricky thing that if I have a criticism for the Waymo folks, there's such a huge focus on safety where people don't talk enough about creating products that people, that customers love, that mm -hmm. human beings love using. Mm -hmm. You know, it's very easy to create a thing that's safe mm -hmm. at the extremes, but then nobody wants to get into it. Yeah. And, well, back to Elon, I think one of, part of his genius was with the electric cars before he came along, electric cars were all kind of underpowered, really light, and they were sort of wimpy cars yeah. that, you know, weren't fun. And yeah. the first thing he did was, you know, he made a roadster that went zero to 60 faster than just about any other car yeah. and went the other end. And I think that was a, a really wise marketing move as well as a wise technology move. Yeah. It's difficult to figure out what the uh, right marketing move is for AI systems. That's always been, uh, I think it requires guts and risk taking, which is, uh, which is what Elon practices. I mean, to, to, to the chagrin of perhaps investors or whatever, but- It requires guts and risk. It also requires, you know, rethinking what you're doing. I think way too many people are unimaginative, intellectually lazy. And when they take AI, they basically say, what are we doing now? How can we make a machine do the same thing? Yeah. Maybe we'll save some costs, we'll have less labor. And yeah, you know, it's not necessarily the worst thing in the world to do, but it's really not leading to a quantum change in the way you do things. You know, when uh, when Jeff Bezos um, said, hey, we're going to use the internet to change how bookstores work, you know, we're going to use technology. He didn't go and say, okay, let's let's put a robot cashier where the human cashier is and leave everything else alone. Right. That would have been a very lame way to automate a bookstore. He like went from soup to nuts and said, let's just rethink it. We get rid of the physical bookstore. We have a warehouse. We have delivery. We have people order on a screen. And everything was reinvented. And that's been the story of these general purpose technologies all through history. 